What's up guys? How's it going? Welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about texturing with attributes and how to texture cloth. So I'm going to break this tutorial in two different pieces. First, let's block out a basic um, cloth texture and some of the things that you want to have in mind when you set up a nice cushion, right? And then on the second part, I'm going to show you guys how we can paint some attributes into our geometry and use that to blend between different materials so that you can add patterns or like draw specific parts on your geometry. Um, this is uh, a very powerful feature in Houdini. Okay, so first things off, I'm right here on bridge and I selected um, a simple cloth texture that I have on our textures, these two textures, and we're gonna start with this lime green texture to set it up. So in Houdini, um, I prepped this little piece of geometry for us to work with, which has UVs on it, but we're gonna delete all the attributes and start from scratch. So let's say for example that you've got a piece of cloth and a lot of the times when you're bringing cloth uh, from Marvelous Designer or somewhere else, your geometry um, might be exploded. It might not be connected. So if you put down an exploded view, it's just gonna blow up into a bunch of different pieces. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can fix that in this tutorial we're just going to use first off an attribute delete so that we can start from scratch and delete all of the attributes on the geometry so we're not cheating middle click you see that we have uvs and we have a few different attributes that we're going to just delete and start from scratch first thing that i want to do is drop down a fuse because we want to make sure that all of our points are fused together and um a big thing is prepping your geometry properly so that we have something solid to work with. Okay, that's the first thing that I want to do. Then I am going to just remesh this to give ourselves um, more points to work with. Something like a target, target value of 0 0.05 gives me something a little bit more robust. All right, and now we need UVs. So let's drop down a UV texture and a UV quick shade so that we can visualize our UVs. So if we come here into our texture patterns that we've selected, let's check out the albedo. Let's do it on the other one. So we can see that we get that base pattern in there. And of course you can play with the pattern here with the different kinds of views that are provided on the basic UV. Or we could use a, you know, the polar orthographic or a UV project is also something that I like to use because we can go to the initialize and kind of set this plane here to um, help us control the size of the texture that we're gonna add to it so basically we have our base right here um, now I'm gonna copy this and set up our material put our Quick shade to the side and drop down a material right here. And let's go ahead and come out of here. We have a basic HDRI dome. Um, we haven't really covered too much lighting on my tutorials, but we can do that in the future. So let's go to materials and do um, RS standard material and uh, redshift material afterwards. We're gonna just name this cloth base and hit this drop down menu here and do an RS texture 
and on the RS texture we're gonna paste the texture that we had copied onto and connect that to our base color we're gonna use the roughness to control the reflection roughness and the ambient occlusion pass being our AO onto our overall and last we're gonna use our displacement here as a bump instead of using it as a displacement I'm just gonna use a bump connect that onto the first input and connect that onto our bump here let's make this a value of 0 0.01 and you can play with that and um, come back onto our object now what we want to do is on our tessellation we're gonna enable that and we're gonna enable displacement because we want to have more subdivisions at render time now we come in here we can now select our texture cloth base come onto our out and drop down a redshift node so let's delete this and say redshift render I'm gonna save and let's load our render view place my render view here at a smaller scale come back to our object context drop down a camera let's give our camera 1920 by 1080 and visualize from the camera all right so we have our base here and you can see our uvs break on the edges that's because when you're using a uv project um so i'm gonna stop the render and I am going to have a look at our UV texture here see if maybe this can give us something that holds a little better without having to unwrap I'm going to texture unwrapping stuff Yeah, I mean, orthographic is a little better. Another option that I use sometimes is on the UV project, just change this to cylindrical. Yeah, let's use our UV texture on orthographic mode. All right. Still not happy with the way those UVs look. The 
purpose of what we're doing, let's just use that orthographic projection. It's gonna break on the edges a little bit because we're not unwrapping it, but it should be should be fairly fine because this is gonna be like a pretty tight texture. All right, so we can see that the texture, if we go to our texture, it's obviously a little big. So I wanna be able to control my scale. So I'm gonna copy the scale here and paste my relative reference onto the other textures so that we control them all from the top. I'm gonna copy this and paste relative reference onto the second input and let's make it a size of three so that it scales it down and it's gonna scale it down on all the textures that we've applied. So that's already looking better. You can see that it's way tighter in there. All right. Um, let's come here onto our object and let's see if our light is a little strong we do like a 1.5 and let's uh, rotate it around a little bit get ourselves a little bit better lighting and it's still like the size of the texture might still be a little large Let's come into our texture and modify it from the top and make it a 5. Alright, and then I'm gonna stop my render and let's add some displacement to this. So, RS displacement. Connect our bought our displacement material into the displacement here and then the displacement we're gonna make it a range of negative one to one and we can use a height field and coming here and displacement scale let's make it a point one so it doesn't go too crazy Let's make that 0 0.01. Yeah, that's starting to give us some nice Some nice results all right so on our camera I'm gonna basically hit enter on the viewport and hit Z and let's find ourselves a good area for depth of field and enable the depth of field in your camera and I'm just gonna refresh my render view And uh, let's see if we can move our HDR around a little bit to get like a little bit more contrast in there.
you can see texturing is all about like a balance of like good lighting with the right values in there so let's just add an rs light into our scene and we are going to give it a little bit of a rim Scale up this shape a little bit. And let's, uh, let's just tint it a little bit with some yellow tones in there so it's warmer. And look at that, with just some simple things, we can start to get some nice looking cloth. Now, how, how do we introduce the second texture into this with paint? Let's do that on our second part of this tutorial. This concludes the first part of this tutorial. Uh, remember, making a good cloth te texture becomes setting up, prepping your mesh properly, giving yourself enough polygons to work with, then the UVs, the art of UVing, which we didn't really cover too much on this one, we just did the simple version of it. And some nice texture sizes, scales, controlling your displacement, your bump, and some nice lighting in there will give you fantastic cloth results in Houdini. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll be back with more.